It's official. Tens has signed a long-term deal with Sentinels in a move that's been reported to cost an eye-watering seven figures. This comes on the heels of a truly insane performance at Valorant's first ever international LAN, Masters 2, held in Reykjavik, Iceland. Over 1 million concurrent viewers tuned in to watch NA assert its regional dominance. And it's an incredible story. A substitute player who became the hero his team, and all of NA, needed. If you're watching this video, but you're not sub to the channel, it's kind of like you're in a post-plant situation. You might have to commit to take the W here. So why don't you hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and then I'll bait for you. I'm pretty sure he's ratting in U-Haul. So an hour before this video was supposed to be published, Sentinels confirmed the news that Tens, the aim god himself, had signed with the organization long term. That means he's no longer on loan from Cloud9. And according to a report from the Esports Observer, the deal is worth a reported seven figures. And while we don't have an exact number, seven figures is objectively a shit ton of money. Now, if you haven't been following the story as closely as we have, here's a little bit of a timeline explaining how Tens ended up with Sentinels. Originally, back in March, prior to Masters 1, Sinatra was suspended from Sentinels, and Tens was added to the team on an interim basis. Then, they went on to win the whole damn tournament. Tenz's interim deal with Sentinels was then extended once again to include the duration of Masters 2 in Iceland. And now, he's North America's hero. And now, finally, after all that back and forth and speculation about exactly how much money this kid would command, it's official. Tens is a full-time member of Sentinels. After the news officially broke, Cloud9 CEO Jack Etienne commented on a Reddit thread related to the announcement. Quote, Hey, to give some context, this deal was done before Iceland. It was a dangerous deal for us as we knew we would soon face Sentinels in the Iceland qualifiers. However, it was important to Tyson to play and I wanted to make it happen for him. Best of luck to Tyson on Sentinels. End quote. Nobody knew except our manager. Perfect, they told us after we won. This news comes hot on the heels of the past two weekends, as Reykjavik Iceland played host to the first ever international LAN in Valorant's history, VCT Masters 2. There was also a League of Legends tournament, but I'm not going to talk about that, and if you're an NA fan, you've probably already blocked it from your memory. Heading into this tournament, the biggest question was obvious which region was going to dunk on all the others. A strong contender for that title was the North American Sentinels roster. They had to make a change back in March for VCT Masters 1 when their star player Sinatra was suspended, so they brought in Tens on loan from Cloud9. When you have under 48 hours before your first game with your new team, it's easy to relax your expectations a bit but Tens absolutely popped off at Masters 1, and he's been doing the same thing ever since. So, at VCT Masters 2, Sentinels swept the bracket without losing a single map. Just needs that one frag. Oh! oh he did as well, the dash comes through, he's gonna whiff, doesn't matter. Oh! And goes Shazam, finds another, the updraft over the top here as he tries to find the, oh my God, Shazam! He's making this one work. But even though they never actually dropped a map, there were some pretty close calls. In their grand final series against Fnatic, which they won 3-0, two of the maps went to overtime and the third was extremely close. As one of my mutuals on Twitter pointed out, how often do you get a 3-0 that's this thrilling? 34 feels like enough to take a headshot, but he does have 150 and a tap and go is what he needs. There's the tap. Oh, it's a oh. bounce from Elbow! And he thinks it's from Long! Oh, Mystic, you five-head man! Oh my word, what a play! Durka trying to get the positional information. I think they understand what's going on right now on Fnatic. There comes the spam into the smoke, or just on the edge of the smoke. Wait a minute. Stick from Boast. Wait a they minute. They don't know where it is. Game. Ping Boast it. Boast is getting the stick, and that's Fnatic picking up the pistol. Oh, no Sentinels. The one was close. They don't know. <gasps> oh, 
my god, he can flash! The team flash! The team flash! Magnum's in the smoke here, tense. Oh my god! Oh, Magnum's got no HP, not like this! Sentinels! They're gonna get the defuse! They've done it! Sentinels are the masters to Reykjavik champions! And they do it flawlessly! They didn't drop a single map! So yeah, it was North America's Sentinels hoisting the trophy at the end of it all. And I think I speak for a lot of fans when I say that finally settling the NA versus EU debate has been extremely satisfying. And while TENS certainly popped off at this tournament, it wasn't a solo effort. Every member of Sentinels came through big for this roster, and I think special mention should be made for Shazam, who had this team looking like a contender from basically the moment TENS loaded into his first game. This run is one of the most unbelievable in esports. A stand-in player becoming the game's icon, his team's secret weapon, and yeah, the MVP at a global championship. Okay, so technically they didn't do finals or tournament-wide MVPs, but I think you can pretty much look at the stats and come to the same conclusion. But while the question of which team was the world's best has been answered, there's a lot of other questions coming up quickly. But what about Sentinel's opponents? Fnatic were the second seed out of Europe, and their play against Sentinels was honestly pretty good. With three close maps, it wasn't a blowout and they easily push Sentinels harder than any other opponent at this tournament. If you can't win, being the most difficult opponent for the eventual champions is a pretty good consolation prize. Durka specifically was a massively important part of this team. He earned the daily MVP awards for three of the six tournament days, and he led the tournament in both entry kills and multi-kills. Suggest tucked in on the site, has reinforcements on the way, but also has the power of surprise. Durka is left alone, the blade storm pops. He's up against an operator no! and connecting every single shot. But in overtime, Fnatic couldn't get it done. I'm hoping we get a rematch between these two teams soon, potentially at VCT Masters 3 in Berlin, assuming that both these teams qualify. Another team that didn't quite get it done at this tournament was Team Liquid who were eliminated outside of the top three after a series against Fnatic. But it's not all bad news for TL. Scream hit those crispy one taps throughout the tournament and actually ended with the highest ADR of any player in the tournament, beating even tens by 20 points. If you're not familiar with ADR, it stands for average damage per round. With so many what ifs and near misses behind him in CSGO, I think there are plenty of fans who would love to see the headshot machine rise to greatness in Valorant. And I think Liquid can go back to the drawing board on this one and figure some things out. Liquid also gave us another memorable moment that I think we're gonna be hearing about for a while. It's all about them trying to bide the time towards A as well. They've got to hinder this approach and Solcas, the flank's so good here. Does he decide to go for this now? <gasps> Delete, oh, the, no. game. Delete oh, the game. No. Delete the game. Delete the game. Delete the VOD. Turn it off. Turn it off. <sighs> Listen, Riot, I'll pay good money if you can turn that call from Pansy into a voice line that plays for everyone when I win around. Just hit me up. But perhaps the most enduring meme of the event will be version one's vanity and his cat ears, now exposed to a huge audience that watched this event. V1 looked like they might be a dark horse contender at this tournament after they bumped Team Liquid to the lower bracket. But after a loss to New Turn Gaming, they were ultimately eliminated by Fnatic. Maybe Vanity went through all of his nine lives, but this performance has put V1 on a lot of people's radars, and we'll be following them closely. Speaking of New Turn, their roster featured longtime Counter-Strike player Solo, who turned 33 this year. After a top three exit from the tournament, Solo said that he was considering retirement. But as a fellow 33-year-old, just go for it, man. Still, it looks like the odds might be in favor of his retirement. Another thing that was significant at this tournament is what some are calling the post-plant meta. And please don't call it the after-plant meta. We already have a term for it, and after-plant just sounds really weird. In any case, my experience with the after-plant meta is ordering onion rings at 1 a.m. Shout out to my local burger place. Basically, the idea is that with the right utility, you can delay a bomb diffuse for a long time and sometimes from very safe locations. Think Sova shock darts, Viper snake bites, killjoy grenades, Astra gravity wells, all that good stuff. 
The bomb timer is similar to CSGO's, but there's also no defuse kits. So if an attacking team manages to plant the bomb and they have enough utility remaining on their surviving agents, then a retake and defuse situation for the defense becomes pretty difficult. Now this meta isn't necessarily new, it's actually been discussed for a few months now, but it is becoming increasingly popular. And there isn't a great counter available to it besides potentially Sage's wall, but that means you have to keep it for the post-plant situation. There are already fans clamoring for an agent that can deal with utility as it comes in. This doesn't exist in Valorant or CSGO, obviously, but in games like Rainbow Six Siege, there are operators like Jaeger or Wamai that do exactly that. I don't know what Riot has lined up, but some ways to counter this meta would definitely be interesting. And whether that counter comes from player adaptation or is specifically developed in a new agent by Riot remains to be seen. So what did you guys think about the tournament? Is Tens going to be annihilating the competition with Sentinels for years to come? Is the post-plant meta already a problem? And most importantly, when are we going to get to see those vanity cat ears again? Let me know in the comments below. Yeah, I'm going to do my best to have an impression. Are you ready? Here we go. So for the past two weekends, Reykjavik Iceland played host to... <laughs> I couldn't do... I couldn't... I couldn't... I couldn't maintain... I couldn't maintain the Devon tone. I couldn't maintain it. it. I bailed out hard, bro. One of these days, I will do an entire video like this in the tone of another person at the score. So if you if you actually get to the end of this video and you watch this, you tell me which person at the score you want me to imitate. And I, I, I'll just take votes and then I'll just try and do it. But this guy who told me that this was true didn't even have a username. There you go, okay? There's a little taste. There's a little taste.